Hey, what's up? John Sanmez from simpleprogrammer.com. And today we're going to talk about side projects and how they change with your experience. So this question is from Zaltin. Zaltin sounds hmm sounds either Russian or maybe yeah I think maybe Russian or somewhere around there. Yeah, I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments. Anyway, he says, how does the role of side projects change when you have let's say two, five, and ten years of experience? Must you build bigger and more complex projects? This is a really interesting question. I don't think I don't think anyone's really asked this question before, but. There, there's definitely probably going to be a change in, in the kind of side projects that you work on. I, first of all, I recommend that you always be working on some kind of a side project. It's just a good idea as a software developer for multiple reasons. One, to keep your skills sharp and to also, you can also get to work on some of the fun stuff that, that you enjoy working on. You don't always get to work on the technologies and, and things that you want to at work. And if, especially if you're trying to learn a new technology, you might not be able to use that at work, but you want to transition to a job that uses that technology, you can do that with your side project. And then also there's there's a, a real good financial incentive. Like if you're constantly working on a side project and you do this for a long time, as long as you complete these projects, which is which is key, I did this video this post on being a finisher, you can check out here. But as long as you complete those projects, you're, you have a good chance of making some money and maybe building a business. I mean, simple programmer and everything that I do and my Pluralsight videos, you can check out the 55 Pluralsight videos I, I did here, they, they started out as side projects. Okay, now this is my full-time my full time gig and now I get to like stand at the, the ocean and shoot videos for a living. How, how cool is that? But let, let's talk about the, the way that things change. Okay, so when you first start out as a software developer, right, I think what a lot of, actually most people get this backwards. A lot of people, including myself, right, I, I screwed this up before, is they try to come up with these huge challenging side projects. They want to build this ultimate application. They're like, okay, I got to learn how to write code so I could build the ultimate video game that I wanted to create, right? And it never happens because it's too large it, and you don't have the skills and the, the aptitude to do it nor the commitment to do that so, so it, never, it never actually comes to fruition and you spend a little bit of time and you get frustrated and it's it's a waste. Remember, things that do not get finished to 100% have 0% value. They're, they're, you get nothing for them. So you get something to 99%, you've put in all the work, you've put in all the time, but you don't get the economic value from that thing. But you pick something smaller and you get it to 100%, and then you do get value. So you should err on the side of, of finishing things than, than making big things, especially when you start out. So when you start out, your side projects actually should be things like copies of stuff that already exists. And, and here's the reason why. Because when you start out, when you have a not very much development experience, you, you what you want to develop is your ability to translate requirements, to translate what you're supposed to build into the actual code and actually getting that done. You want to build up those skills. You don't want to build up the skills of being a creative person who can design an application or a game or something like that. Those are fine skills as well, but your primary skill that you need to focus on is being able to execute, being able to take an idea and turn it into reality. Trying to do multiple things at once, trying to come up with the idea at the same time is going to be destructive because it's going to make things too complicated for you. Try to keep it as simple as possible. So the side projects for, for very early developers, very inexperienced developers, should be copying something that already exists, making your own version of it. Something simple, like a to-do list app, right? That's a very common one that, that developers implement in a language, but start with that. Start with simple stuff that you that you already have the requirements so you can just take something that already exists like an Android app or an, or an iOS app you know something very simple I, when I first started doing game development I, I kid you not I just re-implemented Pong right I, I, because that's a good place to start right because I don't know how to do game development I don't I don't know how to create a Mario game right I, that kind of a game so I started with Pong and then after I did Pong 
I did like a space shooter game, okay, where, where it's just like a, a ship going across the bottom and, and, and shooting enemies. Very simple type of game. And then I did platforms and, and increased the mechanics and, and stuff like that. But I copied stuff. And I'm not saying to plagiarize. I'm not saying to claim that something's your own. But there's so many copies of Tetris and Pac-Man and, you know, and whatever, a to-do list app. No one owns the idea of a to-do list app. So just copy it. And once you've copied it, maybe you can make some slight changes. You can change how it looks a little bit. You can add a little bit of functionality, but just try to do a basic copy. So that's when you're starting out. Now, as you get more experienced, these side projects should get a little bit larger, of course, and you you want to incorporate more more things, right? And and then and then perhaps create your build your own things. Start building architectures, right? When when you first start out, don't worry about architecture. Worry about just building the thing. How can you get it done? How can you make this stuff work so you can get it, get a, a feel for it? But as you get more experience, maybe you've got five years experience and, and you're, you're good, you, you can develop these simple apps. Now maybe you, you say, okay, instead of just focusing on building the app, I want to f- focus on building a clean architecture with my side project, right? I want to actually focus on on, the, on that kind of stuff. And if you want to go the entrepreneurial route, now maybe you start thinking about marketing and design and maybe even hiring someone out, someone to do the design for you and stuff like that. But as you get more and more experience, what, what's going to change with your projects is I think is that you're going to build on that and you're always going to do projects that you can complete, right? So I talk about this a lot in the idea of making commitments to yourself and this, the, these things coincide, right? If you become a person who lies to yourself, you're going to constantly lie to yourself and you're not going to be able to follow through on anything that you, you say. You're going to be a procrastinator. You're never going to be a finisher. But if you can make small commitments to yourself and you can follow through on those commitments, and this is the same thing, translate this as projects. If you can do small projects and you can get those things done, then that's going to create, establish that trust that you have with yourself, with your own abilities. And then you can go for a little bit of a bigger scope thing and you can get that done and complete it, right? If you don't complete something, it's time to take a step backwards and do something simpler until you get, you always want to complete everything that you do. So that means, one, you got to have the gumption, you got to have the perseverance and consistency to actually accomplish and complete the thing. But two, you got to be careful in, in your selection. When you start to start a project, think about how will this end? Think about, am I actually going to finish this? If your answer is no, you're not going to finish it, don't even start it. Don't start things that you're not going to finish because you don't get the benefit. So pick projects based on what you've already done and go a little bit bigger. Go a little bit bigger in scope. But never ever as a side project pick something that's going to take you six months or a year to build the MVP, the minimum viable product, or because it, it's just going to be a waste. It's going to take too long. Things are going to change. You don't even know if it's going to sell. It, it's, it's too big of a project. I would, I would say even if you're the most experienced software developer, get figure out ways to to ship early so that your V1, you can build it in a month or two months or three months at the max. But if you go past the three month mark, you're, you're just, you're looking, your chance of failure of not actually completing goes way up. The, the time it takes may be way longer than you expect. And the chance of you actually shipping it or actually making money goes way, way down because you can't, you can't respond, especially when you're doing this as a side project. Hopefully that's useful to you. I know that's a lot of advice there on side projects, but this is something that is is important, I think, to a lot of people. I actually have a new chapter coming out in my new book called uh, The Complete Software Developer's Career Guide. You can check it out here where I talk specifically about side projects if you're interested in that, whether you should do them, how to do them, all that kind of stuff. You can sign up here to get on the email list. At the time of watching this video, that chapter might not be out yet for free, but you can start reading the other chapters and you can buy the the entire book that will include that chapter when it comes out. If you like this video, if you haven't subscribed already, click that subscribe button below. And if you have a question for me, you can always email me at john at simpleprogrammer.com. I'll talk to you next time. Take care.